Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about why I left Lime Life. Lime Life is a, an MLM. It is a network marketing company, which means that you sign up, you become a beauty guide, you then buy a kit of products. Sometimes they give you some products when you first sign up and then you start recruiting people to sell your products and you make a percentage of everything that they sell. And you also will have your own clientele that you sell to. So from what I understand is the more you recruit people, the more money you make because once those people start selling and they're buying stuff for their own kit, you're making a commission on everything. So imagine the possibilities you could make $10,000 and plus a month by just becoming a beauty guide by having a team. That was not the reason that I started Lime Life. The reason I started Lime Life was because of this. It's their foundations. Their foundations are made by our CMA. Our CMA is a top professional brand of foundations. They create the best foundations in the world. In my opinion, I use them for years when I was a makeup artist. I worked in Dubai for a long time. I worked in television. I worked in CNN. I worked at Sky News, News Anchor. I did a ton of brides and it's the only foundation that holds up in humidity that looks amazing on camera and that never feels heavy and when I found out that I can now retail this I think I was a little bit late to the game because by the time that I signed up for this I had already left the makeup world in Dubai so I was like I'm gonna get back into it this is gonna really push me to create something big for me and create something new for me but I was disappointed by Lime Life and these are my reasons I want to put in a disclaimer these are my reasons it's nothing against the company nothing against the product themselves. I think the products are amazing. I just didn't like the structure. So that starts me with number one. I did not like the structure. Now with any network marketing company, once you sign up, you're kind of on your own. They tell you that you're a business owner now. So you go out and you find your own clients. Some people are amazing at this. They're very uh, type A personality. I feel like that's not me. I wish I could become like that, but the best way for me to sell is through touch and through one-on-one -on -one contact. So when I was doing my best sales as a hairstylist, it was when I was doing my client's hair, I was trying products on them, they trusted me, and they ended up buying tons and tons of products that actually truly changed their lives. That's my best way of selling. So when you tell me that here's a product, go sell it, I don't do very well. I need the human touch, I need the human contact. So as far as the structure goes, they put you under somebody or you can pick your own person that you, you're upline, the person that you wanna be under. And the person that I picked is amazing. She's got tons and tons of energy, good vibes. I really liked her, but then she left the company within a couple of months of me joining. So I signed up for the company I got a whole starter pack and I did actually film a video but I don't know if I'm actually gonna put it on YouTube if I do I am gonna link it my only disappointment was that there was more skincare than makeup and the reason for that is that their skincare actually sells better than the makeup once my upline left I was put under another upline I actually wanted to pick my upline that I really wanted to work with was also a makeup artist and a working professional makeup artist so I sent the company an email and they said sorry we can't do that we're gonna have to put you under the next best upline line for you and they just choose somebody randomly. I'm not sure exactly how the choice goes. Basically, it's a lot of Facebook group. It's a lot of noise and it's a lot. I think I was added to like three or four or five Facebook groups. One was the main Facebook group and then there was like one that was for my region and then there was one that my upline started and then there was one that my uplines up. Like there were so many Facebook groups that I got really, really frustrated because it was so noisy and I put them all on mute. And whenever I had a question, they were like, oh, just look through the Facebook Facebook group search and you'll find a video on it we do lives all the time they really push all of their uplines and their beauty guys to do lives all the time on Facebook I don't want to have to listen to a Facebook live that could go on for 45 minutes to learn one thing and a lot of the things that were being discussed were kind of eh. there was a lot of motivational like you can do this girl you got this girl let's just all clap for each other and I'm wondering okay well where are the clients like are we just gonna sit here and clap for each other or is there an actual guy that that I can follow. I don't know if I just missed it or I didn't get the memo, but it, there was a lot of gaps and there wasn't enough instruction. So the new upline that I had promised that we were gonna do a mock-up party so that I can learn how to start selling. And that just never happened. And then COVID-19 happened. And so I never heard from her. If I were to ask a question, I may or may not get an answer. That was one reason. I just found the structure was a little bit messy and it really didn't work with my personality. And I spent about $300 on my starter kit and I didn't know how to use it. I knew that I could send my clients to buy from the website, but I really just wanted that. Everyone was talking about the community. So where is the community? I found that there was just a lot of noise. Now, another thing that I really didn't like was that I had to buy the products 
if I wanted to test them. Obviously that makes sense. Like you're gonna have to buy the products, but then I just spent $300 on a starter kit and they were taking out about $13 a month to host the website for me. And what I wanted was besides the foundation, I wanted the concealer. I wanted a bunch of lipstick colors because I knew that those would be our, my best sellers. And I wanted some eyeshadow palettes because my vision was that I wanted to do makeup classes and makeup lessons. I found that it was really expensive. Like some eyeshadow palettes went up to like 60, like a, the big, the, a really nice eyeshadow palette that I would want my client to buy would be like around $200. And then when I tested the pigment, I found the pigment was too harsh. For a beginner woman who just wanted to learn some makeup tricks, I found the pigment a little bit too heavy. And so I found myself thinking, you know what? If somebody was gonna come to me and want me to teach them how to do makeup, I would tell them to try drugstore makeup first. I need the colors to be blendable and easy to use. I don't want my client to have to spend an hour trying to blend brown eyeshadow. The prices of the products were quite high. I didn't want to have to spend all that money not knowing whether I was actually going to get that money back or not. I mean, you really have to have a strong business plan in place in order for this to really to take off. And I don't think I had enough space or mental clarity to go ahead and do that. And so I decided to opt out. And I do want to say that I didn't have a solid clientele for makeup. So a lot of the jobs that I get are through agencies. And that really deterred me from going out and aggressively selling. And there's also the monthly website fee that I had to pay every month to allow them to host my website, which was like limelife.com slash Lina Walid. I wanted to be able to create my own website, advertise the way I wanted it so that it felt like it was my, they were my products. And in that case, it made me wonder whether I should just do private label or white label cosmetics, maybe just create my own brand. And last but not least, I just found the fragrance on these products quite strong. So this is the face oil, this is the cleanser. Before I got my products in the mail, I was using Vivier Cleanser, which is an amazing Canadian brand. And I have really, really, really enjoyed this product. I found that the fragrance was really nice. I found that it was really nice and cleansing. It was very gentle. And so once I, once I got the Lime Life Cleanser, I just found that the fragrance was really strong. So every time I washed my face, I was like, felt really quite stripped and this fragrance just hit me. This is another one of their products that I had a bit of a problem with and that is the face oil. I put it into my kit, my makeup kit to use on my clients. And I just found that it was, the smell was so strong and so many of us are quite sensitive to fragrances nowadays. So that really turned me off. So those are my reasons why I left Lime Life. Nothing against the company. I just felt like there were just a little bit of disconnected pieces that didn't come together. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Lena's Makeup and Hair. Let me know in the comments below whether you have signed up for Lime Life. How has it been for you? I'm very curious to find out. I'll see you in another video. Bye. Thank you.